Hi there, my name is Jonathan Silva from Pragmatic Works. For this video, what I wanna focus on is specifically working with Microsoft Dataverse file columns. Specifically, what I love to do is be able to take that file as an attachment in that single column and be able to send it in an email with Power Automate. Now, the specifics of this is really important. Remember, a file column for Dataverse is a one-to-one, -one, which means one column, and one file inside of it, or think of it as one attachment inside of it. So if we ever wanted to do this where there's multiples we'd like to work with at Power Automate, that's a different way of setting up either multiple file columns or utilizing the attachments control and using the notes table to be able to store all that and send it in a different way. But again, for this one, we're focusing on that one-to-one, -one, a single file in a column to be able to send via email. Now, I do have an app ready to go here with Dataverse, this model-driven app. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So this app is my projects and proposals app. I have a list of projects here and some proposals for each of those projects. Now, specifically, what I want to focus on is the proposal. Let's say I choose proposal A here. For proposal A, you'll notice that I have a PDF attached to it. This is in a single column called proposal attachment. What I would love to be able to do is be able to select this record either from the view or here inside of the form, choose flow in the top right corner, and then choose to go ahead and run the flow from there. So for this case, I want to just be able to select a button, run the flow, and everything works great in that perspective. So let's go ahead and set up Power Automate to do that for us. Now, I've already begun the process with Power Automate here by creating a flow inside of my solution, so it's all packaged together up, that is a manual trigger. So it's an instant cloud flow with this manual trigger. The manual trigger that I've selected is when a row is selected with Dataverse. Now, of course, keep that in mind. When we work with Dataverse, this is a premium connector. So you need that premium license to do any of this at this point from what I'm looking at. Now that I have my table selected, what I wanted to do is go ahead and add in an input. If I choose input, you could see the types of users input we can pass in. There is text, so you can have a large or small scale uh, text, or you can even choose email. Of course, email is going to be text just formatted like they're expecting to work with an email. So I'm going to choose that one. And in this case, I will put instead of just email, put recipient email. So we know that this is going to go ahead and be passed in. Okay. Now it looks like it says it's already being used. I'm not sure how that's the case, but I'll be user email. Maybe I do something else like that or um, something along those lines. That eh, user email works just fine. All right. So there we go. Actually, you know what? I don't like user email because I know that's going to be captured by the person who's creating this. So I'll put email address. Let's do that. Make it nice and simple and just pick something in there. We can always format that later on as necessary. So now let's go ahead and add in our next step. This next step here that we can add in is going to let be getting the row that we select within Dataverse. So we can have all of the information about that row available to us. So we're going to utilize Microsoft Dataverse. And the action is get a row by ID. So let's go ahead and choose that. And then pass in our table and the row ID, which is our GUID, our global unique identifier. And remember, the GUID within Power Automate or even Dataverse in general is always the name of the table. So if I come in here to our dynamic content, you can see I have all this dynamic content available. Let's go ahead and put this within our table. So it's going to be proposal. There it is. That's what we need. Okay, so there's proposal. So next, now that we have proposal added in there, we have all the information for us for that specific record. Now let's go ahead and get the file, right? Get that information from that column. So the next step here, it's actually quite simple, is we're going to go back to Dataverse. And if you look at Dataverse here, we have an action called download a file or image. That's exactly what we want. That is going to be able to only point to our file or image columns within that table to be able to open up and get the content from it. So let's go ahead and do that again here. Let's do proposal. Let's choose our row ID again, which is our GUID, same thing, proposal. And then the column that we want to point to is that file data type. You're only going to see columns that are that file data type or image data type. So keep that in mind that if you don't have that done properly, you're not going to see anything here. But there's my proposal attachment. Now that I have 
the proposal attachment and all of the fields I need for that specific record, we can go ahead and get everything set up to send our email. So if I come in here and choose send an email, I'll just go ahead and use the Outlook edition okay, for Office 365. So send an email, Office 365 Outlook, go ahead and use that. In the to field, I can go ahead and put in the input I'm passing in from the trigger. So I'll go ahead and choose that with my dynamic content, which should be at the very bottom here. Okay, so I'll do email address. Somehow recipient email got stored there, but that's okay. There's email address. Then for my subject, I'll just go ahead and uh, demo file attachment from Dataverse. So now I have that. And then in the body, I'll just simply say see attached. For me to go ahead and to send an attachment here with this action, send an email, that's going to be here, show advanced options. And it's right here, attachment name and attachment content. Well, if I select attachment name, I can come in here and I can say, oh, download a file or image. There's the dynamic content from there. Let's go ahead and use that. But it's only giving me the file or image content. Okay, well, that fits right here in the attachments content. So let's go put that there. But I'm going to be missing the name without the name. And I try to send this out with Power Automate or anything and try to move it around. It's just simply going to fail because we need that name. So what we need to do is go ahead and build in dynamic content that includes the name. So prior to our sending email, let's go back up a step. And right before we send the email, I'm going to insert a step that's going to be a compose data operation. We can use compose to go ahead and generate our dynamic content that we need. I'd rather do it in a compose rather than just a straight formula in that action because we could always update the compose and use it later on in multiple steps if we needed to down the road. So here with my compose, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and give it a rename real quick. I'm going to just call this uh, file attachment name just so I know later on exactly what we're using here. Okay, In my inputs, I want to go ahead and get that information. Now, you'll need to work with kind of ex our expression here and format our expression pretty specifically. So there is something, a bit of a trick in order to get everything we need without having to type it manually, is if we go on over here and add an input, let's go ahead and add in our attachment. So search for attachment. We could do it from our when a row selected or from the get a row by ID. Either or will work in this case, and so they're going to be the same. Okay, I'm going to use get a row by ID because I think that gives me the better information as far as the metadata, everything else with it. I'll just go ahead and choose that proposal attachment. Now, we're not done because that's not all we need. What we really need to do is take this right here and format it, actually add something to it. So what I'm going to do is highlight across with my mouse or you can select with your, just click right into the space there, hold down shift and go left one. Okay, it'll highlight that dynamic content for you. Then control C for copy. I can remove that after I copy it. Again, we want to make sure it's highlighted before we copy with control C. Remove that from the inputs and then go to our expression here within our dynamic content area. If I then select expression, I can paste in control V what we just copied. And now you can see we have our outputs from the get a row by D and there's our proposal attachment column, whatever you've called that. In this case, what we need to do is let's get rid of the at sign and both the opening and closing curly brackets or curly braces prior to our dynamic content. So I'm going to get rid of the opening brace and the at sign. Let's go all the way to the end, get rid of the closing curly brace from there. Now, the one thing we need to add in here, that's, this is it, just the last piece, the one thing we need to add in is right at the end of the name of your column, the name of your field. We need to add in, right before that final apostrophe, an underline or an underscore, excuse me, and then the word name. So that's going to go ahead and look at that proposal attachment column, expand it, and grab the property that's called name, which is the attachment name or the file name that we want to utilize. That's all we need. So now we can go ahead and select OK. And now we've built that within our dynamic content for Compose. So we can go back into our send an email and we could just simply put the outputs of the compose right here. Now, yes, I could have built this expression right in the attachments name area. Absolutely. But again, I like to use compose in this case, just in case I want to use this again later on down the workflow. I just repass in my compose outputs so I can come here. There's my outputs. And there we are. That's all we need. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select save. And then we're going to test it. Now, while this test, I'm going to go ahead and open up my Outlook, get that ready to go, pull it over my other screen there, get it ready to build here. All right. So I have Outlook open. So now let's test this. Now, how do we test it? Well, if I come over here, click test, you're going to see we can't do anything. That's because our trigger is coming from Dataverse. So we need to go to Dataverse, to the app itself. I'm going to go ahead and give a nice refresh to this app. So I, hopefully my flow will show up. If you don't see the flow here, when you click on flow, select a record and click on flow. If you don't see it there, we need to go republish the app. So we need to go back into our solution and republish the app. So if you need to, go ahead and do that for yourself. I'll just go back to my workflow, click on the back sign there, and we're going to go to our app here. Let's go ahead and make sure it's open. Where in my app? There it is. I had it right in front of me. I'll go to my app real quick and just republish this app. Of course, we could have done it from the solution. Just select publish all customizations as well, but it's simple enough to do it right here. All right, there's my final publish. I'll do another play just in case. Sometimes I like to just hit play once more, one more time for that preview, just to make sure everything's there. I'll go to proposals. I'll select a proposal. Now I click on flow and we're hoping there it is. There is our flow. All right, so now that we have the flow done, I'm gonna go ahead and select a record, make sure there's an attachment there, select a record, choose our flow. I'll go ahead and point to my email address from here as well. Once it asks me for that in this next input area, all right, just asking me to sign in real quick so I can go ahead and continue. And I'll put in my email address and run the flow. All right, let's let it go from there. Click done. And the flow should be running at this time. What I also like to do is because anytime I work with Power Automate, I always want to watch it, watch the flow run. I'm going to go back in my solution here and I'm going to actually go to my CloudFlow select the cloud flow because I do want to see the designer itself as it comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and select it here and see the editor. But I, I know it worked because I just got an email with my attachment. So I know that this flow ran successfully already because I have the email. There it is. It succeeded for me. Here I can go ahead and select my attachment. If I just click on it, I should be able to open it up here. There's my attachment. Okay, my sample research document that I passed into there. And there you go. We were able to utilize Power Automate to go ahead and set up a way to email out the file coming from that file uh, column within Dataverse, that attachment, that image. It's all gonna be the same here, no matter what we pass in. So then we can go ahead and have that available on demand whenever we work with Microsoft Dataverse, specifically in this case, our model-driven app. Well, thanks for joining me here, working with model-driven apps, Microsoft Dataverse, file columns and power automate stay tuned for future videos coming out as we continue to pass out more and more information working with dataverse and the rest of the power platform see you next time